There's often a lot of talk about looking for life on the moon, or further afield on Mars, solar system moons, or even exoplanets. But we know there's almost certainly life on the moon. We can be pretty sure about this because we actually, well, dumped it there. I would describe this as one of NASA's dirty secrets. When astronauts on the moon had to use the bathroom, it went into bags, and then to save weight when lifting off, they left those bags on the moon. So yes, there is poop on the moon. This has been confirmed by both astronauts since they got back in multiple interviews, and in NASA logs of what was left on the moon, but bags of poop were definitely left on the lunar surface. This was mostly to reduce weight. These missions all collected moon rocks and moon soil, so to make sure the weight remained low enough to take off, they left things like the human soil, as well as other rubbish, and even some of the tools they used during the moon roving. Going to the toilet itself is not as easy as you might think in such low gravity. Things don't drop like they would on Earth. On the moon, the whole thing basically involved the astronauts taping or strapping bags to themselves and then wiping well if they were in the lander, or just wearing a fancy diaper during exploration. I can't find confirmation if any of the 12 people who have walked on the moon did use the diapers for a number two, but they definitely used the bags in the lander. Some of the missions to the surface were days long, so it was almost unavoidable. Interestingly, this means that there have been bags of poop on the moon for over 50 years. I say this is interesting because there are a lot of bacteria and microbial life in poop. So in these bags, we've accidentally been performing an incredible experiment to see how bacteria evolve in both low gravity and being hit by way more radiation than they used to on Earth. There's no atmosphere or magnetic field to protect them from such radiation on the moon. So assuming they can survive, this is something that would be really interesting to understand. There were also other bags full of things like urine, food waste, and all sorts of waste that would contain different types of bacteria, all of which could potentially be evolving to this day. Apparently, across the six moon landings, there were 96 bags of human waste left on the moon, including all of the things I just listed. So that's a lot of opportunity for some of the life to survive and maybe even flourish in its own little microenvironment of a bag on the moon. Some bacteria can reproduce and begin new generations approximately every hour. So if we round it to 50 years of time since the last deposit, that's potentially over 400,000 generations, more than enough to see evolution. There aren't currently any missions planned to go and collect these moon rocks, but it certainly would be a close encounter of the turd kind if it ever happened. Yeah, I'm sorry. Even if we find all of the bacteria has died due to the radiation or even the wild temperature fluctuations that the moon feels over day and night, that will teach us a lot. It would tell us how sturdy lots of bacteria are to space and could help us figure out how likely it is that life on Earth could have arrived on an asteroid from afar. If it turns out it's pretty much impossible for bacteria to survive in space, this idea becomes a lot less appealing. Either way, when we finally start to build settlements on the moon in the future, it will be important for future planners to remember that some of this real estate is already a brownfield site. Another potential source of life on the moon that people like to mention is tardigrades, or water bears. These are microscopic creatures that are famous for surviving in the harshest of environments. They can enter a dormant state and revive themselves even after exposure to extreme hot and cold, severe dehydration, and even the vacuum of space and poisonous radiation. You might think, well, how could these tardigrades get to the moon anyway? They probably aren't in poop. The answer is a private mission to the moon in 2019 called Bereshit. I know, a name like that in a video about poop. What are the odds? This mission carried on board a so-called lunar library, containing most of English Wikipedia, thousands of books, the secret to David Copperfield's magic trick, and unbeknownst to the public, a few thousand dehydrated tardigrades. I do know this sounds like I'm making all of that up, but I promise this is a real list of some of the things on board the spacecraft. The issue was that the mission went wrong and crashed into the moon, potentially spraying the hardiest creature we know of all over the moon. Luckily, or unluckily depending on your view, a recent piece of research has suggested that even though these little microbes are very tough, they might not be able to survive the huge impact force that a crash landing might have put on them. The experiment to test this was incredible by the way. The team that did it, led by Alejandra Traspas, put a couple of tardigrades at a time inside hollow nylon bullets 
and shot them at increasing speeds. After the bullets hit a target a few meters away, they checked to see if the little bears survived. The results showed that the shock pressure from the crashed rocket would have turned those tardigrades into absolute mush. That's not the technical term, but it is an accurate one. So they almost certainly didn't survive the impact, and we're left with our best chance of current life on the moon being inside bags of astronaut poop that have been there for 50 years. Leave your thoughts in the comments below rather than on the surface of the moon. And let me know if you knew about all the things left behind on the moon during those Apollo missions. Do you want to see what evolution could have done to the poop bacteria? If you're new, consider subscribing too. I promise that most of the videos on this channel are not about poop. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.